SpaceX's huge Starship vehicle launched towards space for the first time ever on Thursday, rising into the sky from the company's star base facility in South Texas. Who boy, I tell you what. Sadly, Starship didn't make it to the final frontier. Its mission ended with a bang just under four minutes after liftoff, sending pieces of the stainless steel craft raining into the Gulf of Mexico. However, that was an eventful four minutes. It sure lasted longer than me. So what exactly happened on Starship's first launch attempt? How did SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk react? All this and more in today's episode of Great SpaceX. That was an explosive finale, but this was definitely no disaster as SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk has spent the whole day expressing gratitude for it. An exciting test launch of Starship, learned a lot for the next test launch in a few months. SpaceX also stressed Starship successfully lifted off from the orbital launch pad and climbed to an apogee of around 39 kilometers over the Gulf of Mexico. The company wasn't expecting full success on the debut space launch and it cheered the boxes that Starship managed to check. The giant rocket spaceship combo cleared Starbase's launch tower, for example, and survived Max Q, the point during launch when the stresses are highest on the vehicle. Congratulations to the entire SpaceX team on an exciting first integrated flight test of Starship, the company tweeted shortly after the vehicle's rapid, unscheduled disassembly. With a test like this, success comes from what we learn, and today's test will help us improve Starship's reliability as SpaceX seeks to make life multi-planetary, it added in another tweet. There's no point in speculating about what caused today's test flight to come to such a dramatic end as SpaceX is analyzing the data and will let us know what the investigation determines. But it is worthwhile to highlight some of the milestones that Starship notched today, as well as the the moments that didn't go according to plan. The biggest success was getting aloft at all. Starship climbed high into the South Texas sky, achieving a maximum altitude of about 39 kilometers according to the data tracker SpaceX provided during its launch webcast. A failure on the pad today would have been a serious letdown, especially if it resulted in an explosion that destroyed Starbase's gigantic orbital launch tower. That was likely the one outcome SpaceX hoped to avoid as it would have set back their operations at the South Texas site considerably. To get this far is honestly amazing, SpaceX's Kate Tice said during the launch webcast today. Everything after clearing the tower was icing on the cake, and clearing the tower is quite an involved process. Not only do Starship's 33 first stage Raptor engines, or a high percentage of them anyway, have to operate normally, but so does all of the tower hardware. Everything released, SpaceX's John Innsbrucker said during the launch webcast. The hold downs, the quick disconnect arms, everything moved out of the way according to plan. Starship's first stage booster, known as Super Heavy, didn't fire on all cylinders during the launch, however, as three of its 33 Raptors apparently didn't light up at liftoff and two more conked out during the brief flight. Still, the power of 28 Raptors got Starship high into the sky. There was a brief bright flash from those engines about 33 seconds into the flight, though it's unclear if this indicated anything off nominal. Starship kept climbing and made it through the Max-Q gauntlet in one piece at around T plus 80 seconds, eliciting cheers from SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California, where employees had gathered en masse to watch the liftoff. The next big milestones were supposed to occur back to back to back just under three minutes after liftoff, super heavy engine shutdown followed by stage separation and the lighting of the upper stage vehicle's six Raptor engines. But this is where Starship faltered. The vehicle appeared to start performing a prescribed flip ahead of stage separation, Innsbrucker said during the webcast. But Super Heavy's engines continued to burn and the vehicle began to tumble, sparking moans of concern from the crowd at SpaceX's HQ. Stage separation never came and Super Heavy's engines appeared to keep firing long past the targeted cutoff point, which was 2 minutes and 49 seconds after liftoff. The full stack Starship kept tumbling for another minute or so before exploding 3 minutes and 49 seconds after launch, 
likely because SpaceX activated the vehicle's flight termination system at this point. As noted before, we should learn more soon about why Starship met an explosive event today, and it probably won't be long before another Starship takes to the South Texas skies. Now, let's see how SpaceX's Starship stacks up to other rockets. SpaceX's Starship is officially set to propel itself into the record books on its latest flight, becoming the tallest, heaviest, and most powerful rocket ever launched by humankind into space, topping a roll call of famous and history-making heavy lift launch vehicles, including the mighty Saturn V that first took humans to the moon. The combined Starship and Super Heavy together stand at a towering 120 meters compared to the Saturn V rocket, which was only 111 meters. Its 33 Raptor engines will generate more than 16 million pounds of thrust, roughly twice that of the Saturn V. Know that SpaceX has lost some engines right on the launch side, but even NASA's new mega rocket, the Space Launch System, which flew for the first time in November, was dwarfed by the capability being built into Starship. The SLS stands at a height of 321 feet, or about 98 meters, and produces 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. Effectively, they are two different launch beasts the former pushing the envelope of rocket design and reusability, the latter harkening back to the past, but both have the common aim to open new pathways for human exploration to the moon and then Mars. Ultimately, the Starship and Super Heavy combination constitutes a quantum leap in space technology, with each stage of the launch vehicle designed to land back on Earth, much like the first stage of the SpaceX Falcon 9, for refurbishment and reuse. In terms of total thrust, the 33 engines on the Super Heavy booster will break the record of 10 million pounds of thrust from 30 engines that powered the Soviet Union's N-1 moon rocket. The N-1 never reached space on four failed launches from 1969 through 1972, however. Heavy lift or super heavy lift launch vehicles are capable of lifting between 20 to 50,000 kilograms, or about 20,000 tons, to 100,000 tons into low Earth orbit. Other currently operational heavy lift launch vehicles include Ariane 5, which launched ESA's JUICE spacecraft to Jupiter on April 14th, China's Long March 5, Russia's Proton M, and the Delta IV Heavy. Additionally, the Angara A5, Falcon 9 Full Thrust, and the Falcon Heavy, which can lift nearly to orbit, are designed to provide heavy lift capabilities in at least some configurations, but have yet to be fully proven for low Earth orbit. Several other heavy lift rockets are in various stages of development, including ULA's two-stage Vulcan Centaur rocket, which has been in development since 2014 and could finally make its debut in early May following numerous delays. This fully expendable 62-meter rocket is set to replace ULA's Atlas V and Delta IV rockets, which have been in use for the past two decades. The Vulcan Centaur is designed to lift 27.2 tons to low Earth orbit and 6.5 tons to geosynchronous orbit. In comparison, SpaceX's Falcon 9 could carry 23 tons to LEO and 8.3 tons to geosynchronous orbit. Other new entrants waiting in the wings are Blue Origin's new Glenn, which is named after pioneering astronaut John Glenn. Announced back in 2016, this would compete with SpaceX's Falcon Heavy and others, but seven years on, new Glenn remains to be seen in one piece. But of all heavy lift vehicles, the Saturn V remains the most iconic and is set to hold on to its title of reigning champion for orbital lift capability at least for a while longer yet. Starship didn't achieve a stable orbit on the test flight this week. NASA's three-stage booster was used to send American astronauts to the moon in the late 1960s and early 70s. It could launch payloads of up to 45 tons to the moon or 120 tons into Earth orbit, weighing 3 million kilograms fully fueled at liftoff. But that's about all we have for you today. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and we'll see you next time.